Good afternoon, South Africa. I'm Bonnie Mbouli. Welcome our celebrity guest chef today, uh, Sue Ann Allen. How are you doing, love? I'm doing well. How are you doing, love? I'm very well. Good. I'm very excited about all that I'm seeing. I mean, speaking of Heritage Day, there's nothing that contributes to South African heritage like Super M. And what are we going to make today? So we are going to be making a Clover Super M Monster Triple Look at this thing. Look at it. Look at so, it. Yum. Absolutely. Yum. yum. Can't wait. Now, our first guest today, Blessing Gweni, has lived a very colorful life, to say the least. His journey started in Limpopo, where he ran away from an abusive uncle to go and live in the bushes. After moving back to Deneen with his mom, he ran away from home again to the streets of Alex Township. He ended up in prison, where he developed a passion for art, and since then, he never looked back. And today, he stands out as one of South Africa's most celebrated award-winning artists. I'm so grateful that today we get to start the show with an incredibly inspiring story from a young man who's managed to make art his medium of healing. And also when Mail and Guardian name you one of the top 200 young South Africans to keep a lookout for, it's a story to be shared. Blessing Gumbeni, welcome to Afternoon Express. Thank you, Daniela, for having me. Sure. So yeah. let's first start at the end and then make our way all the way back to the beginning. You have got some of your artworks in some of the biggest galleries around the world and have just been recognized, obviously, by receiving your award. Tell us more. Um, first of all, I would say that uh, at the beginning of my life, it was very um, tense life, you know, as a uh, young boy without yeah. um, having a full support for, from um, um, both parents, is, you know, because I myself, as a, I was growing up, I had more of um, uh, being raised with a single parent, you yeah. know. So my mom, uh, she tended to neglect me at some point, not neglect per se, but she, she, she needed a new life with the with a, a new boyfriend, should I say, which is my stepfather today. <laughs> so but by that time for me, I did not know what was it exactly to live a life without uh, the, 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 the father, you know. But because of uh, that reason, uh, she took me to uh, stay with my uncle who then um, abused me. For instance, she, my uncle wanted me to look after his cattle more than me going to school, all this and that. Um, each time, whenever we we're doing, uh, maybe we'll make milking cows, mm -hmm. he would, if the cow would kick the bucket of milk, he would beat me, not the cow, because sure. it's the cow that beat, uh, you know. So for me, it was more of um, not understanding what exactly mm -hmm. the life of uh, a single person alone at the, at the very early age, very young. I think I, I was very young that mm -hmm. time. I was like almost... Um, uh, six years upwards, you know. So six years old, you were living with your uncle already at that stage. At that Mom stage. had gone to go live with her new boyfriend. Yes, And yes. Uh, he then started to abuse you. And, and then what? Uh, because of that reason, then I moved uh, away. I, stay, uh, I moved away uh, from his home to stay in the bush. At six years old? Yes, at six years old. And then um, after two years from that period, I realized that... Ish, there's no way that uh, my life could be, you know, in this till forever. Mm. Uh, luckily, my mom, she came back to look for me. Um, but that time, my life was very, mm. like, bushy kind of. So I, I was no longer trusting uh, humans. So I was staying, mm. like, in the bush for almost those years, yeah. surviving from stealing or this and that. Let, let's not brush over that because I think it's very important to understand. I mean, mm. two years as a six-year-old boy mm. living in the bush just to run away from, from a household where most six-year-old boys are so reliant on their families to keep them alive and keep them afloat. What is life like in the bush at that age? I think basically is to adapt to uh, that um, space that you happen to be in, you know and try to also uh, move away from fearing um, the dark because each, you know, it's, it's more rural than the city where there's lights and the mm -hmm. stuff, you know. So it's like you, you tend to adopt to listen to owls at night and listen to um, hyenas, all this mm -hmm. and that at night because it's how the life should be like at where some Where did point. you find food? Where did you find community? Uh, basically, uh, in rural areas, they, they f do farming, you know, so you would go and steal a watermelon in, in your neighbor's farm or, yeah, something to keep your life up. Sure. And, yeah, so. okay. and then your mom came back and then she said she, she tried to look for you and she found you eventually. How did she find you and what was that reunion like? Basically, uh, most people, they used to see me going to uh, a nearby river where, you know, in the noon I go and spend time, you know, uh, swimming and 
you know, drinking water whatsoever, like an animal life, mm. you know. <laughs> then one of the day, then I heard the voice shouting, hey, hey, whatever, you know, from her. It was her and one of my uncle who, who was also looking for me, you know, mm. with her. So it was more of like um, when I heard the voice, I did not believe, but I ran away still. And then after recognizing the her voice, then I tend to understand, no, that should be my mom, you know, yeah. something like that. Then, yeah, that's sure. how we kind reunited. of reunited. And then you met her new, was then husband, I'd imagine, they'd got, they'd got married at that point. And then the three of you moved over to Alexandra. No, no, we moved over, it was then in Bush Bakri, we moved okay. to Zanini, where First. she was married to this mm. other, yeah, which is my, my stepfather still. <laughs> then that time I did not trust a man because my, my uncle abused me so much that I could not even trust any person mm -hmm. close to me. Yeah. Even though he tried to, uh, you know, to be friend with me, whatever, whatever, or something like that. But I realized that still I could not find peace within myself. Then that's where I moved uh, from, um, from her place to and any town where mm. I lived as a street kid still sure. with friends, you know, they, at least their life was much yeah. more better because mm. there were a lot of um, people around, people yeah. and food around. So you would like survive. I mean, yeah. pushing stroll there and there, you know, yeah, yeah something like that. Up and until one of the days in, um, in 1995 where we thought of me and my friend, like, you know what, this is time for us to move up, you know, mm. but not knowing what, where, where we're going, you know. Yeah. And so ended like, up in Alexandra, is that where you two ended up in Alexandra? Yeah, that's how uh, we hiked the trucks that um, transport food mm. from, you know, tomatoes and mangoes from, from to, to the city here. Mm. So that's how we ended up uh, being mm. in Alexandra. I work with a lot of street people um, in the Western Cape and I, I found that life there is, is so challenging, especially for young people because of the lack of opportunities, the lack of community, the lack of resources. Mm. You found yourself in a community of young kids who were you know, going around doing what you needed to do. You needed to steal to get food, you needed to steal to kind of survive, you needed to get blankets, you were fighting against each other's other little communities. And so that process led you to prison, which is where the artist was born in you. Yeah, uh, I, during my time in Alexander, I stayed in uh, Marlboro and with friends like I got a lot of friends there which then uh, some of my friends was uh, were advanced they were just you know having fun with mm. just want to be naughty so they uh, some of them they are a bit older so they, yeah. they, they 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 had guns and the stuff so that's where all things uh, the prisoner things mm. came to to affect my sure your life, but as a, you were ten years old, I think at that point, and then at, you were in prison as, as a ten-year-old boy for like nine years. Uh, no, no, no. I, in Alexander, I stayed uh, another three years as yeah. a street kid. Um, that's where I started to understand all the roots there and there. You know, sure. uh, getting introduced to these other guys, and I was the young, bravest one who would do anything to survive. Mm -hmm. sure. So that's where um, perhaps the nature wanted me to. To end up in that space where yeah. I can recognize, uh, you know, yeah. things and and realize my life, you know. So. Amazing. Sure. Mm. There's so much to unpack with us on Afternoon Express today. Our incredibly inspiring guest, Blessing, joins us after the break to share more of the stories of how that journey from prison to being recognized internationally for his art happened. So stay right where you are. Welcome back to Afternoon Express on SABC3. We've got a very inspiring guest joining us on the couch. His name is Blessing. And before the break, we shared a bit of his story uh, for the rest of you. A very hard story for a young boy to go through. From, you know, growing up with his mother to his mom leaving, living with his uncle, being abused by his uncle, leaving his uncle to go and live in the bush at age of sort of like six years old, um, to go and learn more about life by himself in the bush. And then kind of got reunited with his mom, moved with his mom, stayed on the streets, then moved to Alexandra Streets, then to prison, and then the biggest moment of his life was where the artist was born within him and now he's re internationally recognized for the work that he's doing so blessing let's pick it up from from that sort of story you were in prison and then art found you yeah in prison um i started uh, doing art where at some point i became a, a teacher teaching other inmates and then in 2006 i came outside where it, it for me it was something that uh, changed my life because when i came out I, I, I was only five days outside where I came across with a friend who invited me to participate in um, sort of a group show in um, Carlton Center. 
that time I was doing more realistic work where I, uh, I was doing portraits of people and mm. that's where I found my pretty girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> she liked the way I was doing my art. <laughs> Good so stuff, funny. my yeah, man. But Good it, stuff. Yeah, but, you, you never know. lost your charm. Yeah, so. but at that time, at least uh, I generated some cash, you know, within that yeah. week. And then the project moved from different spaces to different to uh, Central Library where we got a week as well exhibiting there. And then we went to uh, Deep Blue Soweto where we were doing similar mm. program. That's where uh, the thing of teaching other people started, you know. Mm. And then okay. that time, of course, because of the, um, in life, you know, you need to move up and up. That's why I went to um, Artist Proof Studio and join in and do uh, my course as a printmaker, yeah. you know, that's where I, I knew how to um, operate a computer, mm, all this mm. and that, which which is a part of a, an artist, you should yeah. know all those things. Then, yeah, I landed myself a freelancing job, you know, in, in some of TV production, and then, yeah, we were doing cartoons. At some point, I became a puppeteer, operator, and storyboard sure. uh, planner, all this and that. Then, in 2012, where that's where everything changed, where I, I applied for Reinhold Casiro Award, which, uh, uh, which is uh, honored on behalf of the Nadine Gadma, the late Nadine Gadma husband, Reinhold. Oh, yeah. yeah, so when I won the award, it allowed me to stay at the Beck Factory Studios for three months, uh, having um, transport fees, uh, you know, food, everything was there for me. So mm. that's where I started to dig within yeah. and, and dig within myself to, to yeah. also venture into the art world. Yeah, yeah and so let's talk about some of those pieces because, I mean, you've expressed a lot of your, your pain and your suffering as a sort of youngster in these artworks, and so they've got deep meanings for you. So I'd love to see them. Let's start with the ones that are on screen at the moment. Oh, uh, yes. <laughs> I can't even remember the title. Oh, this is the mistress of... Uh, dispressed African or something. I can't recall. Yeah. <laughs> so it's <laughs> Some elaborate old. autistic name, yeah. It's a, it's a bit old pieces that I, I have in my life. But basically within uh, what uh, my expression within my work is about um, telling the stories that we, um, this is a brutality actually, I remember this. I did mm. this in uh, Cleveland <laughs> during my, uh, my Is that residence. on a wall? Is that, on, is, that, is that outside art or is that a, is that a illustration? No, it's on the canvas. Wow. It's okay. on the canvas. Yeah, so brutality, it was speaking more about, because when I was there, I, I, I happened to be in a, a one of the area where um, uh, Tamaya Rice was shot, killed, you know, mm -hmm. for no reason, a young boy just died for, yeah. you know. So I thought it was very good for me to also bring that into how uh, the authority uh, mm -hmm. create wars between uh, yeah. people, you know, mm -hmm. because at some point it's like, uh, you don't hate, uh, the color you hate the fact that the police killed yeah. your child and mm. which is if uh, kind of affecting the rest of yeah. the community yeah. so let's speak more about those race lines because there was a, a piece of artwork that we was well, not a piece of artwork it's a it's a whole like a, a performance piece that you had we've got some footage of it yeah. of an artwork that really impacted you as an individual tell mm. us about this one because this is one of my most fascinating pieces of yours yeah the piece also is driven from because the costume as you see it's a self-made costume and and which uh the piece also speak about my past uh, being imprisoned and come outside and realize that still uh, this prison is still following me for my daily survival. Otherwise, if I can't uh, uh, cope, then I will end up going back to prison. But this yeah. piece specifically, it was um, speaking about reclaiming your land because the piece was uh, uh, showcased in a Santin Center where it's more uh, a capital, uh, uh, capitalism, people, yeah. you know, like yeah. um, elite people, they, yeah, yeah. capitalist yeah. place, where the right owners of that space, they're no longer able to walk free and uh, move free, you know. So as a cow, I still believe that it, it was once a farm at mm. some point, you know. So now I came there, but at the very same time, I was not speaking only about um, uh, reclaiming your land yeah. and the stuff only, but I was also using the unskinned cow head as a a way of to communicate about why each time we should think of color issues instead of understanding that mm. it, a skin is just a dust that yeah. any time can fade, you know. Yeah, so that's it would strip where, us from our skin and then almost yeah, underneath we're all the same. We're so all the same. We should so, have that communication. So that's where uh, that expression of saying, imagine uh, you w we wake up all of us unskinned and then 
you, you're sitting there, you're unskinned, yeah. I'm sitting here unskinned. Are we going to hate each other because we're going to be ugly that yeah, moment? We'll or are same. we going to see us as the only sure. way of how to deal with our own issues with yeah. regardless of dividing ourselves, you know? So clearly your work is elaborate, it's thought out, it's brilliant, and we love it. Um, but now not only was your work internationally recognized, you won a whole bunch of awards, but you've got some really cool clients. Samuel L. Jackson walked <laughs> yeah. into your studio and was like, I'm waiting for you to finish my piece. Yeah, it was a great moment for me to uh, realize that at least uh, he traveled all the way just to come and you know, in my studio and have yeah. fun with me. We, we chatted, we went for dinner, and then luckily the piece that was on the wall, which is behind the, 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 he, behind us over there, it was one of uh, the piece that took his heart, you know, like, oh no, this represents the African, mm -hmm. you know, a structure yes. and well-built, you know, because the figure behind has so much of, um, uh, this, it's beautiful actually yeah, and so well, awesome. well, uh, well detailed and well yeah. done. And then luckily because that time I was surviving out of uh, t-shirt printing, that was, you know, during yeah. that period, period yeah. where I was doing t-shirt as well. So I gave him a, a piece of uh, Onda our t-shirts, which was, because Onda was doing very well that time, was part of mm -hmm. uh, the parcel of grooming me and giving me um, a chance to live again yeah. and be able to buy material from the money that I was generating mm. from that um, <laughs> Merchandise kind of. Blessing, I almost feel like I, I'm going to tear up a little bit because to see the person you are today with all that you've managed to experience in your life, uh, to see the people that you've met, the artwork that you've done, the awards that you've won, the recognition you've been given from a little six-year-old boy who was living in the bush after the kind of life that you lived as a youngster, we absolutely salute all the work that you're doing and we cannot wait to continue to celebrate journeys like yours. And I know you're working with a lot of other young kids who are in streets giving them purpose and meaning with their lives, so mm. please continue doing that, all right? Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> sure, blessing. You've been a blessing for us on Afternoon Express. Thank you very much. Yeah. On Fridays, it's Winner Home on Afternoon Express, proudly brought to you by Private Property. Follow the journey of three competing design duos as they decorate three homes, one room at a time. You stand a chance of winning your choice of one of these three completed homes at the Eye of Africa Golf and Residential Estate, decorated by the design contestants in our grand prize competition. The decorated home boasts finishes by Plascon and Caesar Stone, as well as premier appliances by Grundig, and it's worth three million rand. To enter, visit privateproperty.co.za and vote for your favorite design duo. You're also automatically entered into the bi-weekly giveaway, where the latest prize is a Grua Eurocube sink mixer, professional valued at over 12,000 Rand. Visit privateproperty.co.za and enter now. This is your chance to win the home you've always dreamed of. SA's favorite interior design reality competition, Winner Home, sees three design duos transform empty spaces into lavish homes. And one of them could be yours. To enter, visit privateproperty.co.za and vote for your favorite design duo. Put yourself in line to win amazing prizes in the bi-weekly draw and automatically be entered for a chance to win the grand prize, your choice of one of three fully designed homes in the Eye of Africa Golf and Residential Estate in the south of Joburg. The finished property will include luxurious finishes by Plascon and Caesarstone, as well as premier home appliances by Grunding with a total prize value of more than 3 million rand. Competition details plus T's and C's can be found on the private property website. Watch the breathtaking properties come to life as the design drama unfolds and stand a chance to win the biggest prize on South African television, your very own dream home. After the break, we've got award-winning rapper Java performing live. You do not want to miss this epic performance. We'll be right back.